Mom, is that okay? Has he improved at all? I haven't heard from you in a while, and I was starting to get worried. You finally read the message the last time I told you to visit your dad? You didn't do so. And now you act like you care a lot? It's easy to forget about him when you're busy building your perfect little life, isn't it? I still have to work, Mom. I don't have time to take days off every other week. If I have the chance, I'll visit Dad. Honestly, it's not like I don't want to see him, but things are hectic right now. It's just a false promise, right? You still can't change this troublesome behavior. You have married Allison, but still have this attitude? Don't you understand? Your father isn't getting any younger, and he needs his family around him now more than ever. Mom, please don't grumble like that anymore. It doesn't help. I'm just concerned about Dad's health. If you don't want to tell me, that's fine. I can call the hospital myself. Dad's health is getting better, or so they say. I visited him today, and he seemed a little more like himself. There's nothing seriously wrong with him. Yet. I see. That's good news, because Allison was very worried. She keeps asking after him. Good? In what way? He still has to stay in the hospital for a few more days before they'll even consider discharging him. We should not be complacent, though. Your dad's health is not well. He still smiles and winks at me, but there's a sadness in his eyes. I can't quite place. It's really dad's style to put on a brave face, no matter what. Do you think I should visit dad with Allison? Maybe having her there would cheer him up a bit. If you want to visit your father, you should do it now. Otherwise, he will be transferred to the intensive care unit and you won't be able to see him, even if you want to do. You are an adult now. You must know how to allocate time properly for the important things in life. You're ready to grumble again, aren't you? Okay, okay, I'll arrange my schedule to visit Dad. Just stop with the guilt trip. As long as you have honest intentions, it's enough to make your dad happy. By the way, is Allison okay these days? Her belly seems to be getting bigger by the day. Yes, she didn't feel much discomfort during pregnancy, but recently her belly suddenly got bigger. She said she felt a bit tired lately, and I finally felt like a father. It's a strange feeling, but a good one. Only pregnant women can understand that feeling. There will be many things to worry about for Allison in the coming months. Please take good care of her. It's a truly challenging time during pregnancy. Be more careful than usual and make sure you're there for her every step of the way. Yes, I will try my best. Allison's my priority right now, but I won't forget about Dad either. Don't just talk. Make sure you take good care of her. Think about it, Dylan. Allison's carrying your child, a little piece of both of you. She's going through so many changes, her body working overtime to create a miracle. Don't be that husband who forgets how precious this time is. Make sure you're there for the doctor appointments, the cravings at 3 a.m., the mood swings that come out of nowhere. Because if Allison can't stand you anymore, because you haven't been there for her, well, that's a burden you'll both carry for a long time. Okay, okay, I get We really love each other. There have been a few times when I forgot to pick up groceries after work, but she understands how busy things can be. Besides, pregnancy hormones make everything seem like a bigger deal than it is, right? Right, of course. Pregnancy hormones are just a figment of our imaginations. There's nothing to it at all. Look, Dylan, I just want you to be there for her. Now, there's also this. You probably have a lot of things to worry about right now, but there's something else you need to know about your father. What's wrong? Is it something serious? Don't tell me he's gotten worse. Actually, your father can no longer walk. The doctor called it lower hemiplegia. But it all happened so fast. One minute he was complaining about the hospital food, the next he couldn't even get out of bed. Looks like there's going to be a whole new set of challenges for your father and for all of us. Although he seems to be okay mentally, the doctors say there's a chance it could be permanent. He still needs someone to take care of him. Someone to be there for him every step of the way. What happened? Haven't you just said he's better now? This doesn't make any sense. It seems not. The doctors are still running tests, trying to figure out what caused it. All I know is that my husband, the man I've spent my life with, can't walk anymore. And let me tell you, it's a lot harder than you might think. What about after discharge from the hospital? Will he still have to go to work? What to do next? This is a nightmare. Dad can't walk, he can't work. How are we supposed to manage? This throws everything into chaos. 
Your father has resigned from the company, but he still has to work for a while before retirement. We can't live off of his severance package forever. I'm considering hiring a caregiver, but you know how stubborn your father is. He wouldn't take kindly to a stranger bossing him around. It's not too complicated. Hire someone patient and experienced. There are plenty of good caregivers out there. However, there is still a lot to be done in the future. He'll need constant help with daily tasks and therapy appointments. It'll be a full-time job. If you could come to live with your dad, he would feel more relieved. Knowing his son is there for him would be a huge comfort. Is this too difficult, Dylan? Allison is pregnant, so I can't just uproot our lives and move in with dad. We have our own place, our own things going on. Besides, I can't stand dad grousing and complaining all the time. It would drive me crazy after a while. And on top of that, I don't have much time to take care of him. I have a demanding job and a family to start. I know, if I'm too busy, can you help me at least a little? Surely there's something you can do. For example, what can I do? I'm not exactly qualified to be a physical therapist. If it's daily household chores, I will try to handle them. But if it's necessary to take him to the hospital for a checkup, can you help me? Taking him for a ride in a regular car is very exhausting, especially with all the medical equipment he needs now. We can't afford a specialized van, and the struggle is real. Can't you at least help me with transportation? Impossible! It's so hard! He's your husband, your responsibility. You shouldn't rely on help from your son to take care of his own father. I already sacrificed so much for you, raising you, putting you through college. That's too ungrateful, Dylan. He really needs your care this time. This isn't just about the physical stuff. He needs his family around him. So what? I also have a family to take care of. After getting married and starting a career, we don't owe each other anything anymore. We have to find ways to solve our own problems. Oh, if you need Allison's help, that's okay. Although, I don't know what a pregnant woman can do to help besides maybe moral support. Forget it. I will find my own way. But you have to take good care of Allison. Don't treat her that way, especially now that she's carrying your child. Remember how difficult it was for me when I got pregnant with you? This is a crucial time for her, and you need to be there for her every step of the way. I've said it many times. Even if you don't say it out loud, I will do my best for Allison. You also work very hard. Try your best too, Mom. We'll figure this out somehow. This is just a lot to take in right now. Where are you? Your father is in danger. The doctor said he suddenly had a cardiac arrest and is now in the ER. You have to come over here right now. Don't you understand the gravity of the situation? Your father could be, could be slipping away from us. Why do you keep bothering me? Why do you make a fuss about all of this? Now that I'm in the middle of a multi-million dollar deal, what can I even do? Besides, I'm having a crucial meeting with my colleagues. They're all waiting on me and this could make or break the entire project. What? Are you having a drink? How can you be so indifferent? Don't you even care that your own father is fighting for his life? He's your father, Dylan. The man who changed your diapers, coached your Little League games, and put you through college. Where's your sense of family loyalty? Do you even realize how much pain he's been through right now? He might not even pull through this. Isn't this the moment when a son should be by his father's side, holding his hand and offering comfort? Look. I get it. This is a tough situation, but there's nothing I can do from here. I'll call Allison to come. She's probably just hanging around the house cleaning up. Maybe she can hold his hand and sing him a lullaby. Isn't she carrying a child? How can I bring her here? The stress, the emotional roller coaster? It wouldn't be good for her or the baby. And besides, what good would she do at the hospital? But she doesn't do anything except take care of herself at home. So she probably has a lot of free time. At least someone should be there with dad, right? Are you serious when you say those words? Hasn't she suffered enough already, taking care of you and your every whim? Now you want her to risk the health of your child just because you can't be bothered to put your precious meeting on hold for your own father. <sighs> I know. Tomorrow I will arrange to go to the hospital. There's no point in rushing over there now if the doctors are doing everything they can. Besides, wouldn't it be worse if I showed up all flustered and sweaty after rushing through traffic? I need to be calm and collected when I see him, right? What? Tomorrow? What's the point of going tomorrow? What if he's gone tomorrow? Then what? What will you say to him at his funeral? Sorry, Dad, I was a little busy making some money to be there for you in your final moments. Haven't I said it before? Taking care of your husband is your responsibility. 
You knew the risks when you married him. I'm busy right now, dealing with very important matters. Please don't bother me anymore with this emotional blackmail. What the hell are you talking about? Are you using your brain? How can you be so ungrateful? This man sacrificed everything for you and this is how you repay him? In his hour of need, you turned your back on him like a coward. Nancy, if I have some free time between meetings and conference calls, I'll come over. Just stop calling me every five minutes. Can't you see I'm trying to work here? It is so unfortunate to have raised you in this life. To think I poured my heart and soul into raising a son who would turn out so cold and calculating. Unbelievable. Hey, Dylan. Dylan? Mom, I have something to ask you. Are you free now? I know things haven't been the easiest between us lately, but... That's surprising. I did expect you would text me like you usually do. Keeping a safe distance. Not wanting to get too emotionally involved, right? No, no, that's not it at all. Allison just gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. She's already on maternity leave, but you still have to take care of dad. It must be very tiring, right? I just wanted to see if there's anything I can do to help you out. Maybe with errands or housework? Didn't you ignore your dad when he was in the emergency room, fighting for his life? How dare you come here now, acting all concerned? You don't want me to take care of the baby, right? You just want to shove your responsibilities off onto someone else again. Allison's maternity leave is about to end soon. We both still have to work and it's very tiring, especially with a newborn. Anyway, taking care of dad can't be as tiring as he makes it out to be. So, please accept it. You might be really happy while enjoying playing with your grandchild, right? You always loved babies. There's nothing left to say here, Dylan. Do you remember what you said before? You said taking care of your husband was my responsibility. So I think you should take care of your own child, too. You made your bed, now you have to lie in it. Don't talk like that. And that's your grandson. Blood of your blood. Please agree quickly. This would be a perfect chance to rebuild our relationship. You don't have any grandchildren as far as I'm concerned. Especially not one from a son who is irresponsible and throws his own family under the bus. So I don't want to take care of him. What? No, don't joke like that. He's such a cute baby with those tiny fingers and that button nose. Allison and I can barely handle all the snuggles and cooing ourselves. Don't you want to hold your own grandchild, spoil him rotten, and shower him with love? Love? That word doesn't seem to be in your vocabulary, Dylan. I have discussed it with your dad, and after a lot of soul searching, we decided to cut off all ties with you. So you're no longer a child who gets to run to mommy and daddy for help when things get tough. You have to manage your own affairs raise your own son, and deal with the consequences of your choices. What? Are you serious? This can't be happening. We're a family. You can't just disown me. A family? Where was that sense of family when your father was in the hospital, clinging to life by a thread? Where was it when Allison needed help, but you were too busy with your precious work? We poured our hearts and souls into raising you, giving you everything you ever needed. And how do you repay us? by turning your back on us in our time of need. Stop joking. I just didn't help then, but things are different now. Take care of dad, please. We can work something out, I promise. How could you cut off ties with me? How can parents do this? Don't you have any love left for your own son? Does that mean we have to endure everything? We are also human beings, Dylan. A person's patience has limits, and ours have run dry. You've shown us nothing but selfishness and a complete lack of responsibility. Forgiveness is a two-way street, and right now I see no remorse on your end. Well, if you don't have a son anymore, what about Allison? Does she visit dad regularly? Why do you treat her so well but treat me like this? It's not fair. Allison is very understanding. She sees the situation for what it is. We always welcome her with open arms because she's a part of the family. Unlike you. Now that you've grown up, or at least we hope you have, you should be independent instead of relying on your parents to clean up your messes. If you have enough courage, maybe you can even learn to be the father your son deserves. What do you mean, Mom? Is there something else going on here? Please, tell me what I can do to fix this. Don't you understand? I love you both. Mom, did Allison come to your house? 
I just got home then saw that she left a note saying she would leave. Her parents are both dead and her friends all say they don't know. My stomach is churning with worry. I haven't been able to reach her on her phone and the house feels so empty without her. She's at my house. Didn't I already tell you? I'm not your mother anymore. We made that very clear. Why do you still say that? I'll pick her up right now. Mom, please help me take care of her. Don't let her go. This can't be happening. Allison wouldn't just leave without a word, especially now with the baby being so little. I don't want to. By the way, why will you come to my house? You haven't exactly been a welcoming presence lately, have you? What do you mean, Mom? I just want to pick up Allison and bring her home. Where else would she go? We have a family here, a life together. Did you read the note? Then you should know that Allison wanted to leave that house. Do you think you can just waltz in here and take her back like nothing happened? Like she's some possession you misplaced? Please don't preach. Then you know about the note too? Why didn't you contact me sooner? Allison wouldn't have left if she knew I was worried sick. Of course, I know about the note. And of course, I didn't contact you. Why would I help someone who treats my daughter like a maid and a punching bag? Even if you are my own flesh and blood, I can't support you in this. How could she be your daughter? And I never abused her. Mom, please don't talk nonsense. We just have a bit of a traditional family dynamic. Allison doesn't mind taking care of the house. That's her role. Traditional? More like tyrannical. Allison told me everything. At home, you were a bossy, patriarchal man, expecting to have waited on hand and foot. Even though you both have worked, you let Allison take care of all the household chores and the kids. You still act superior, like you're doing her some great favor by letting her live under your roof. It's my family's rules, the way things have always been done. Mom, please don't meddle in other people's affairs. This is none of your business. Family rules? The selfish family rules like this are unnecessary. And don't you dare tell me this isn't my business. When you get angry, you yelled at Allison and the newborn baby. That's why Allison came to my house asking for help with a trash-talking tyrant like you. Who wants to be with someone who can't even handle a crying baby without losing their temper? The family matters don't need your intervention. My job's really exhausting. The child keeps crying all night, barely letting me get any sleep. And on top of that, Allison always complains to me about being tired or something. I must be the one who's tired. Maybe I should take some vacation days, but work is piling up and... It's only work that you do. And you don't help with housework or taking care of the children. You don't even know the basic principles of being a husband and a father, yet you act superior like you're the only one who contributes. As long as you're still in that house with that attitude, I won't let Allison come back. She deserves better than a whiny, self-centered husband who can't handle a little crying. You have no right to make those kinds of decisions. Allison is my wife, and we'll figure things out on our own. I'm not your son anymore, remember? So don't interfere in my family affairs. You're right. You're not my biological son anymore. But I said, Allison is my daughter. What parent can bear to see their daughter being treated like a second-class citizen in her own home? She deserves love and respect, not exhaustion and resentment. Well, if I'm not your son, then Allison is just an outsider? What stupid things are you saying? Still insisting that Allison is your daughter? I really don't know what you're talking about. Are you having some kind of breakdown? Allison came to help take care of her father-in-law, remember? She never mentioned her parents passing away. She did it out of respect for you and to be a good wife. Huh? Really? Wait a minute. You should know it yourself. During her pregnancy, Allison often came to our house to visit. She's much better than you'll ever be. You didn't even visit your own dad when he needed you the most. It's all because of your excessive concern that made her so tired. You were constantly pushing the responsibility of taking care of dad onto me, and Allison felt obligated to help out. She said that her parents were still alive, but she wanted to show filial piety to us since you wouldn't. When she had just given birth, she still frequently visited us despite how tired she must have been. It truly moved us to see her dedication. She can't even take care of her own family, let alone yours. I don't know what she's thinking running around like that. For her, she could only have a few moments of relief when she's at our house. She was only treated badly at your house, but when she's at our house, I can help take care of the baby. That's why she doesn't want to go back. What are you talking about? What the hell is going on here? Everything you're saying is insane. She wants to divorce you and become our adopted daughter. She can finally have the loving family she deserves. What are you talking about? Are you serious? 
I can't understand what you're doing right now. This is all some kind of twisted joke, right? I'm not kidding. You haven't treated your parents well, and you haven't taken care of your old family. Not only me, but everyone in your life is fed up with you. Maybe this is a wake-up call you desperately need. Don't do this. I will sincerely apologize to Allison and you. Please forgive me. I don't want to lose my family because of my foolishness. I'll change, I promise. Just give me another chance. It's too late to regret your foolishness now. I'll examine myself, so please send my apologies to Allison. She blocked me and I can't contact her. Allison has suffered enough of this mental torture. So she chose to leave you. You have completely failed in your responsibilities as a husband and a father. From now on, the four of us will live happily together and you will be alone. We have all grown up and we can handle our own business. A few days later, Allison and I went to Dylan's house and forced him to file for divorce. At first, Dylan begged to say sorry, but Allison mostly decided to refuse, and finally he had to sign. Although there were some disputes like alimony and emotional compensation, the court later affirmed that all these issues were borne by Dylan through the assistance of a lawyer. Of course, custody of the children was also given to Allison, and issues related to property division and divorce were also resolved. Dylan, to the last minute, was still stubborn, still only cared about his own interests, and did not value the people around him. Such a selfish personality in the end costs everything. Now, we live together. Allison is very grateful to us, and her little baby is also growing up healthy. My husband and I will die someday, but when that day comes,